Hey folks, Matt Eason here, Scholar Gladiator. I'm just doing a quick um, mobile phone recording, taking advantage of a spare minute I've got. Um, so I've got a busy day, but I do have a spare minute at the moment, so I'm waiting for something. So, um, I was uh, clearing out, as you know, I'm in the process of packing things and moving house. Um, and clearing things, things out, I found, um, I found various things actually that I'd forgotten that I owned. But one of those things was uh, this. Now, what is this? Well, clearly it's a knife. It looks a bit like a kitchen knife, doesn't it? Well, you're kind of right, but it's a replica of a medieval kitchen knife. It's a sort of late 15th century style. Uh, in fact, it's a style of kitchen knife that really runs through from the 14th to the 16th centuries. But this particular one, you'd probably say the rough form of it is... Um, 15th century um, and it, you know it's got a traditional uh, a construction that you might find on many of your modern kitchen knives it's a full tang with uh, wooden grip scales either side a little um, bolster at the top there which is actually two brass um, uh, sides to it that are riveted through and then the uh, in this case there are four rivets holding the grip scales onto the tang um, obviously you could have different numbers and then different placements and you'll notice that the blade is not totally dissimilar to what you might find some uh, modern kitchen knives. And I did recently do a video about South American um, gaucho knives and um, those sorts of uh, those sorts of knives that we that go by various names um, that we find in um, South America. And I said that they have a medieval root. Well, pure coincidence. I discovered this in the back of a drawer. I know I should really clear out my drawers more often. Um, but um, there you go, this is the type of knife that those knives that we find um, even today in countries like Argentina and Brazil um, and Uruguay, the, in these countries we still find knives today that basically are based on medieval um, kitchen knives. But what I really wanted to say just very uh, briefly um, is that when we look at medieval mm, dagger fighting, shall we say, uh, from the treatises, we're often looking at um, bollock knives, but more particularly on rondel daggers. And the reason for that is that rondel daggers are featured very heavily in the medieval treatises. Um, for I think for um, a particular reason, the rondel dagger is not to be confused with the general purpose knife. The rondel dagger is a very particular type of dagger for a specific context. It is an armoured fighting dagger. Now that's not to say that they were only worn and used in an armoured context. Obviously they would, as we know, they were worn in civilian life and used in civilian life as well. But you have to remember that they're a bit like a sword. They represent who you are and what you are. If you're a knight, and I use that term very loosely because most of these people weren't technically knights, they were gentlemen men at arms. If you are a, a gentleman in the 14th, 15th century, then you wear a certain type of sword, usually, and you uh, dress a certain way, usually, wear a certain style of shoes and a certain style of doublet, and you carry certain styles of dagger. And what you walk around wearing is, generally speaking, a rondel dagger, a basilard, or a bollock dagger. There's a few other options, analaces and things like that, but generally speaking, the predominant types are basilard, rondel dagger, Bollock dagger and then bollock dagger has a slightly lower status connotation. They were bollock daggers were also worn by common people, probably more than any other dagger or knife type. But these are specialized weapons. This is not this is a kitchen knife. How's a kitchen knife different from a specialized weapon? Well, those all have thicker thrust centric blades. This is a, a tool that is designed for preparing meat, but um. What I want to point out is whilst on one hand medieval people wore uh, daggers, which are different from knives, although you could say daggers are a subset of knives, and if we refer to Fiore's treatise, he does use the word dagger, but he also refers to coltello as well, the word for knife. Um, so a dagger is a type of knife, but a dagger is a specific thrust-centric military, or should we say combat, version of a knife, whereas this is a tool. But... The final point I want to make is within a medieval world context, whilst what we look at in the treatises is mostly about defence against a rondel dagger, or in some cases a basilard or a, um, a bollock dagger, um, within the real world, within the actual 15th century, the majority of knife crime, if we want to call it that, the majority of knife crime was probably done with these, because these were the most readily available and common, just like in the modern world, so if you look at knife crime in London in 2018 or 19, unfortunately, the most predominant type of knife used in knife crime 
um, demonstrably are kitchen knives. And whenever the police do these weapon sweeps, yes, they find spoons, yes, they find zombie knives, um, but those are a tiny proportion compared to the huge piles of kitchen knives they have. Why? Because kitchen knives are everywhere. They're in every kitchen. And, not, and you know, kitchens don't usually even have just one kitchen knife. Kitchens usually have a bunch of different kitchen knives of different sizes and blade widths for different purposes. Some for, you know, paring fruit, some for cutting, uh, filleting fish, some for preparing um, meat and so on and so forth. Bread knives and it go the list goes on. Um, so, within a medieval world context, despite the fact that we study treatises that are uh, quite uh, centric on knightly type weapons or gentlemanly weapons, you know, the long sword, the rondel dagger, the poleaxe, um, the lance on horseback, this kind of thing. Within the actual medieval world, almost certainly the most common sidearms, uh, the most common big weapons for people to walk around with would be quarterstaves, obviously missile weapons like longbows and crossbows, uh, sword and buckler, messers, um, bollock daggers. Um, and we see bollock daggers very little in the medieval treatises, despite the fact that we know that from archaeology they were definitely the most common type of dagger in medieval Europe. And kitchen knives. These are the most common type of knives in archaeology to find because, of course, everybody has a kitchen, everybody eats food, every, everybody eats food that's been prepared with knives like this. And unfortunately, in cases of domestic violence and street violence, these probably featured very heavily. And a final parting thought is that, therefore, the methods of fighting with these um, or defending yourself from these is slightly different to the defence from rondel daggers and the context is different. So therefore, unfortunately, they're not really represented in the medieval treatises. But uh, if we look at the later Renaissance treatises, we do see some 17th century, uh, 16th and 17th century um, treatises, manuals, if you want to call them that, um, that do start to look at the use of large cut and thrust knives. Um, and so that's a whole different topic, but that material is there once we get into the Renaissance and the rondel dagger starts to be, there starts to be less focus on knightly weapons and more focus on soldiery and civilian weapons as we go into the Renaissance. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope there's been some interesting thoughts and I hope that my phone recorded this adequately. Um, I will see you guys soon. Cheers, folks.